some of you might recall, we actually looked into the uh, throttle position sensing on my electronic throttle control on my car using the uh, DSO-152 or 3, whichever one it was. <clears throat> um, so I thought I'd get back to this and look at this, um, not from the position sensing standpoint, but from the actuation standpoint in this time. So just the briefest of overviews of an electronic throttle control system, guys. You have, it's a drive-by-wire system, right? So quite some time ago, they kind of got rid of, rid of the, uh, the Bowden cables that you would simply step on the gas pedal and you'd open up the throttle plate mechanically, right? So things have long since moved on and you know, it's electronically controlled. And it's, it's not just in the interest of complexity. There's a few reasons they do that these days. Right, so starting with the basics, the uh, APP, the accelerator pedal position, um, it's actually an air pedal if you think about it, I suppose. So when you step on the pedal, it's a dual channel system, guys, a couple of potentiometers basically telling the engine control module here, item five, um, essentially the torque demand from the driver, right? Um, so the position of the APP is interpreted by the ECM, as I said, as the torque demand. And what it will do is via a driver circuit, actually um, port power to the, uh, to the drive motor inside the uh, electronic throttle control assembly. That's really a servo valve, I guess. Um, it's really applying torque to the uh, drivetrain, guys, in order to, uh, again, via the drivetrain, uh, open or close the throttle position. It's important to realize that right here on the uh, throttle assembly, there's this bias spring here, guys. And that actually consists of two different springs. There's a return spring, as you might imagine, just like an old school carburetor for obvious reasons. But there's also an open spring as well, which will uh, maintain the throttle plate in a default open position when it's unpowered. And again, that's done for a reason as well that we might touch on later. So that's it. Step on the pedal. ECM interprets the uh, torque demand via the, the two channel sensors, position sensors. Utilizes the drive circuit as an H bridge. That way they can toggle the polarity and the uh, duty cycle uh, onto the motor. The polarity controls the direction. The duty cycle on the, on the signal controls the rate that the uh, throttle will drive either open or closed. And this H bridge toggles the polarity guys. Um, again, it's interesting the engineering behind it um, as a safety measure, right? They drive the throttle open and they drive the throttle closed, right? As I said, there's two bias springs in here. If one of them were to fail, open or closed, you wouldn't be able to drive the throttle to the uh, likely to the closed position in a failure scenario, right? So it's driven in both directions. As I said, the rate at what it's driven at is duty cycle controlled, and we'll see that on the scope. So just the same way I can change the drive direction on this little motor here, guys, just by flipping the battery. Sorry, I'm trying to do this one-handed. The H-Bridge is doing the exact same thing, only it's doing it through... Um, solid state switching, but it's just changing the drive, how the polarity and the drive is being applied um, to the uh, the motor inside the electronic throttle uh, body assembly. Now I'm applying 100% duty cycle here, obviously, but if I tapped it, I could control the rate at which this little motor is driving, you know? Perhaps that's taking the analogy to, to the extreme, but I think you get the idea. Yeah, so don't get overwhelmed by this uh, schematic here, guys. There's a lot of details on here, but we're just going to strip it down to the basics. Again, uh, a week or two ago, we touched on the position sensing of the uh, electronic uh, throttle body itself, the position sensing for the throttle plate. Um, the whole assembly, I guess, is uh, item 30. The motor being item 31, that's what we're going to focus on uh, in this particular video. So you can see there's two separate wires going to it. And again, that those two wires are actually driven via this H-bridge circuit here. Basically, solid state switching. Again, as I said, that will toggle the polarity for the open or closed. And will duty cycle control the signal that's on that line in order to control the rate at which the uh, throttle plate moves. Now keep in mind, 
this is spring biased. So you might see some pulses there that are on the line in order to maintain the throttle in a particular position, guys. Again, it's spring biased and it default positions. Uh, APP is over here. As I said, the uh, accelerator pedal position, guys, it's two channel. Again, for safety reasons, as you might well expect, the two channels come in at an ECM. And the ECM not only looks at your torque demand, but will also consider um, the entire vehicle, basically, with respect to is there any interventions required on the throttle, right? That is to say, is the traction control saying that there's spinning wheels, close the throttle plate? Is there uh, is the ABS sensing a skid? Perhaps you want to close the throttle, modulate the throttle. Um, what else? Uh, the rev limiter, for example, I suspect um, it's likely more than just an ignition cut. I suspect they'll probably close the throttle, although I don't know that for a fact. And there's some failure scenarios, guys, where the throttle will close as well, right? Again, for safety reasons. There's actually a relay which can pull the power from the entire throttle circuit in the event of a serious failure. So there's provision for that as well. That's item 28 here on the drawing, but we won't get any of that. We'll just keep it basic for the drive on item 31, which is the motor, again, coming from the drive circuit. So the, the electronic throttle control itself, guys, the throttle body uh, consists of the motor. The motor actually drives the throttle plate via a gear train, as I mentioned, and is, and is uh, spring biased uh, in both the opened and closed positions. And again, two channel uh, sensing for uh, position sensing of the throttle plate itself for control purposes, of course. Right, let's get into the car. So since we're only utilizing the uh, the uh, DSO-152 guys to keep things simple, we'll only be able to view a single channel. So we'll see the opening side um, of the uh, signal or the closed signal. We can toggle it to the closed signal by uh, pinning, changing pins at the connector, of course. But that will be fairly limited with respect to given as an idea what's going on with the throttle position itself. We would need more channels in order to be actually able to simultaneously view the uh, TPS sensors in the throttle position assembly. Yeah. So in light of the fact that we only have a single channel and so we can appreciate the overall operation of what's actually going on. I'll bring the little VPECKER scan tool in here. Not only handy for... Um, appreciating what's actually going on we can actually graph the uh, we'll go into the graphing format and actually see the uh, throttle position um, in a graphic format <laughs> um, yeah so the view pecker is handy handy for that and uh, an endless source of dirty jokes we'll be using the dso 152 as i mentioned guys I'll set our leads uh, just so i can actually take the scope inside the car because i'm here by myself i can't actuate the uh, the accelerator pedal position um, sensor, the gas pedal, uh, if I'm outside the vehicle. So I'm just going to stretch the leads inside the vehicle. Um, as I said, we'll use the V-Packer um, scan tool function in order to get uh, an appreciation for what's going on with the throttle position. Uh, I'll use a ground clip to go at ground, of course, and I'll back probe the, uh, the electronic throttle body uh, connector uh, with a pin here adapter pin just so it can easily back probe it and you'll need the little um mcx adapter which is uh i guess mini or micro coax to standard coax on the leads just be careful with these little adapters on the end of your lead guys it's easy to drop the lead on at the floor you know and uh, this brass is is soft enough that um i just crushed this in a quite a serious oval and yeah, I can reshape it, but can you see the inner pin there? I've managed to buggerize the inner pin. It's all bent over, and if you were to connect that to the scope, you might mash up the, the coupling, you know? So, yeah, just watch these. They're delicate. So here's the throttle body itself here, guys. You'll likely hear it buzzing, completely normal. Um, my car is obviously not running at the moment, but uh, the uh, key is in the run position, so the throttle is active. The throttle will open to like a default seven degree position ish. That will be a function of the adaptive strategy of the car. Again, as I mentioned, depending on how coked up the uh, throttle body actually is, it may open a bit more in order to accommodate for idle air purposes. Right. So as you can see there, I'm on the yellow wire is back probed. That's actually the open side of the uh, 
the coil on the motor. Let's go, uh, let's go inside. Okay, so inside the vehicle here, guys, I've got the V-Packer in the, uh, in the background, if you will, as opposed to the scope. And again, that's just there so you can see the relative position of the, the, uh, the uh, throttle. So I'm just going to slowly step on the pedal here. And you'll see on the V-Packer, you'll see the uh, position of the throttle actually climb. It won't actually open 100%, but that's 100% of electronic um, authority. The, uh, physically, it's not 100%, but otherwise you could jam it, of course, in the open position. It won't allow it to go a 100% uh, open position. It's like 86% or something like that, which is the throttle plate fared completely with the Airstream. I think that kind of makes sense. So again, the idea being is the V-Packer is in the background, just so you can correlate what's going on in the scope. So again, this is the open side of the uh, the, um, the drive motor, guys. The pin I'm currently in, right? I'll ramp the throttle actually open. There's the uh, the D the duty cycle. Actually, there's the width of the duty cycle, and I'm just slowly, progressively opening the throttle here. Again, that signal will stay there, guys, because it's working against the closed spring. The motor has to generate enough torque to keep it in the fixed position, even if, even if it's not changing. I'm just hold, holding the throttle at set position. You can see that the open windings are being powered to this degree. And again, how wide the uh, pulse is, is a function of the rate. I'll accelerate quickly. You can see them widen momentarily there. Now have the throttle actually fully open. That's holding the throttle in the full open position. So when I release this, they'll basically completely disappear. What you're not seeing is that that signal has been toggled over to the other side of the motor. Again, it's a single channel operation, guys. I can only show you one side at a time, but I will toggle it at the connector and you'll see the closed operation. So again, let's just, so that's just off the idle stop there, basically the electronic idle stop, not physical stop. And then again, I'm ramping it open. You can see the, uh, on the graph in the back there, the throttle is actually opening, released completely and gone, right? So the open signal is gone. Right now, there is a closed signal there. You can't see it again because we're only in single channel operation. We're only looking really at the open side. So again, slowly opening guys, look at the width of the pulse, the duty cycle, the average voltage being applied to the motor is low, of course, because it's a very narrow duty cycle. Wider duty cycle, I'm accelerating faster. The average voltage would go up, of course, causing the motor to open not only more, but at a higher speed uh, and a higher rate. And then off. So I hope that makes some sense. Let me toggle to the closed windings. This is my wee buddy Yoko. She's never far, I'll tell you. She's never far Just at all. Let me toggle over to the blue wire. And this will be on the closed side of the actuation uh, drive. Let's go take a look at that on the scope. And... There is always pulses there because the bias spring is trying to open it a wee bit more than the target throttle position. So you'll see, even without me stepping on the pedal, there'll be some closed pulses which are trying to drive the motor and are driving the motor to the target position. Let's go take a look. Okay, so there you go, guys. Again, I'm not touching the accelerator uh, pedal. And you can see there is some drive, just as I mentioned there, in order to attain the target position for the throttle that again is a function of the um, adaptive strategy of the car. It knows in this state, it wants that particular throttle position and it's driving the closed windings just a little bit here in order to attain that position, right? So as a step on the pedal, you're gonna see these are gonna disappear as the throttle opens, which makes sense, right? Because we're looking at the, the closed windings here, guys. So I'm gonna open all the way. And as I get to the fully open position, you'll likely see some closed drive come back. Again, it's modulating just on that 100% position. And as I start to close, you'll see the closed drive come back. It's closing under mostly spring uh, pressure there, guys, right? But you'll see if I basically lift my foot off the pedal completely you'll see the drive come back and you can see how wide it got there momentarily because it's actually driving it back in addition to the uh, to the spring pressure 
So you have to keep those those two bias springs, the open and closed bias springs in mind. And this drive makes a lot more sense. Again, I'm at the full open position there, guys. It's just a few spikes of closed again in order to maintain that electronically closed hundred percent or sorry, that electronically open. Uh, again, it's not 100% open as the scan tool actually says. It's the electronic 100% open position. Again, about 86%. And that is the throttle plate um, basically in the fared or in line with the airflow. Makes sense, right? Okay, so as I release the, th the pedal here, I did that at a reasonable rate. You could see the closed um, come back. So a little bit of drive. Let me open up fully again and I'll just release it completely. And you can see how wide it actually got there momentarily. So I hope that makes some sense, guys, right? It's easier to understand the open windings. Again, this is the closed windings. And um, what, we're, what we've got here is a wee bit of drive towards the closed position, which is working against the open bias spring. And it has given us the 7%, uh, 7.8% um, um, throttle electronic throttle uh, um, position so i'll just open a wee bit and the close is gone completely because i've opened the throttle just a wee touch there as you can see and again it would make sense that the, the close is not really there for the most part as i drive the throttle open but as i release it the drive does come back plummets towards the close position and now this is here just to maintain the, uh, the target position of the throttle. I hope that all makes sense, guys, right? We bit of detail on throttle actuation as opposed to a week ago there, it was throttle position sensing, right? That's it. Keep in mind, the width of the uh, pulse is gonna be a function of the, uh, the rate that you're asking for, throttle actuation, either open or closed. And of course, the polarity that you're looking at will be a function of whether you're on the open side or the closed side of the motor drive circuit. I said, boys, hope that made some sense. Cheers.